Greetings everyone, my name is Atterville, and welcome to my blind let's play of Code Arcturus, a retro arcade 2D action platformer shooter developed and published by Durzadir Games. For full disclosure, I received a key from the developer in order to help Peter title. So let's begin with level 1, Into the Lab. The Marine awakens in a strange alien lab and tries to gather his bearings. So the requisite tutorial stage. As this is a blind let's play, I apologize in advance for any silly mistakes or false assertions I'll make. As the Marine, we can move around, jump and shoot. On the top left is our health bar, on the top right is our currencies. Our three currencies appear to be silver, gold and red coins. I did stream the game earlier, but I decided to re-record the footage. I can't reach any of those coins yet. I'll have to return back here once I acquire several upgrades. I just passed the checkpoint. I gotta be careful, as my fire rate isn't the highest yet. And the insectoids can fly towards me pretty fast. And we're out of here. We have both three currencies and three different kinds of crystals. So we both have currencies and crystals. In order to purchase any upgrade, we need enough of both of each. Here are the descriptions of all the upgrades. Please pause if you want to read them fully. What I want to focus on is upgrading my jump pack, suit shield, and blaster fire rate. And there are three game modes in this game. The first of which is to complete the level normally, the two other ones being nerf mode, where I have to complete the stage without any upgrade, and speedrun mode, where I have to beat the part-time. Those are necessary for acquiring the other stars. So on to level 2, Deeper Lab Dive. The Marine, finding no way to go but down, continues to look for a way out of the lab. In this stage, we're introduced to Walker Droids, and more crystals that I can't collect yet. I need access to double jumping. I like how we start off the game with a basic item magnet. In most games, you have to walk over the collectibles manually. Thank you. 
By the way, I turned down the sound effects volume in favor of music. Ow. That's kind of my fault because I saw it earlier. The walker droids aren't too dangerous, as long as you time your jumps properly. And we're out of here. I moonwalked out. Still not enough for a jump pack. I need one blue crystal. I will upgrade my health, however. So on to level 3, Insects and Springs. The lab's layouts are getting more odd, but the marine is not going to stop now. From this point on, the game wraps up in difficulty pretty fast. And there's a the blue crystal I need. Unfortunately, if I don't hit a checkpoint, I'll lose all the crystals I collected up at this point. There's another blue crystal. Can these wall crawlers damage me? Yeah, they can. Hitting them is gonna be a slight problem. Now I need to wait for the droid to turn around. And there's a checkpoint. Despite none of the stages having the health pickups, the checkpoint placement is pretty fair. Spaced about a minute apart from each other. The one thing I wish I had in this game would be the ability for me to angle my shots slightly upwards and downwards, especially for the insectoid enemies. So close to the checkpoint. So the solution here was to simply hold right. For the flying foes, 
It's best to practice tap firing. I had much less trouble with this one. Now I can get my double jump. On to level 4, Calm Calamity. The Marine manages to make his way to a new section of this strange place, and so far, no sign of hostile life. Unfortunately, the same can be said for the environment he needs to traverse. It's starting to feel like he's getting closer to something he's not supposed to. There are no enemies to worry about here, only deadly obstacles. And here, we are introduced to the spike balls. Long story short, I don't like them. I'll get into why soon enough. Need triple jump to reach there. Uh, if I fall down here, I'm dead. These might as well be instant death spikes. There we go. Double jumping helps a lot in this stage. It's one of the first upgrades you should obtain, alongside health and fire rate. First try, and we're out of here. I made it look a lot easier than it actually is. We'll need this for level 6. Might as well get more HP too. On to level 5, Slime Supper. It's starting to feel like the Marine is getting closer to something he's not supposed to. There are more obstacles, more insectoids, and strange slime creatures have started popping up. And the game is right. If you're having trouble, go back to the previous levels and farm up a bit.
Oh, this section. The spike balls count as solid objects, so you can't simply phase right through them. Plus, the Marine's iframes aren't really that good. You can take several hits in rapid succession. Combined with how you temporarily get stunned and knocked back, means that sections like these are a lot more dangerous than they seem. Make sure to stay here, don't rush wards. There's a blue slime just waiting for you. That's why they're my least favorite obstacle in the game so far. If I started out with a greater amount of max HP, and or my iframes were greater, they would be much less difficult and frustrating. Let me true, I'm dead. Wasn't fast enough. I don't know how to get past them unskated. I won't get that white diamond then. That's it, I'm running. They probably infinitely respawn. I could use this as a farming opportunity, but I'd rather not. If I fall in the pit, I'm a goner. On to level 6, Escaping the Swarm. Insectoid swarms have started massing around the marine. They are chasing from behind, charging from the front, and climbing out of the walls. They seem desperate to stop him from progressing any further. This is it. We're almost at the halfway point of the game. This level special, as is zoomed out, for good reason. 
Throughout the stage, we'll be constantly assailed by these insectoids, and it never stops spawning. Before you start this stage, I highly advise you purchase the HP, Double Jump, and Fire Rate upgrades. You can use this as a farming opportunity, but I only advise you do it when you're next to a checkpoint. Once you get down here, the enemy spawn rate starts to let up a bit. Another thing that this game technically does is play a sound cue once an insectoid notices you. Now comes the hard part. The problem is that they constantly respawn. There's our checkpoint. Phew. You can accomplish all this without double jumping, but I don't recommend it. Unless you're playing nerfed mode, in which case you have no choice and good luck. The stage gets a lot easier from this point onwards. These bigger mech enemies are only really hazards if you jump into them, or if there are other enemies attacking you at the same time. Goodbye Insectoid Nest. Not as bad as level 4 or level 5. 6 in a few ways felt like a breeder stage. So far, 
My current opinion of the game is that it's fine. It's tougher than I initially expected, but I'm still having fun. In the next episode, I'll clear the second half of the facility. Well then, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.